So James uh, 3 1 clearly states, Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with a greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the sheep also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever they will of the pilot direct. So also the tongue, the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. The tongue is the main topic, okay? We need our tongues to be tamed, to be tamed. So let's dive in to uh, the, uh, the videos that we're going to take a look today. And we'll be making commentary as we, uh, as we go along. All right. So this is uh, Tiffany. She has been, you know, she's quite known for having a foul mouth and she does defend herself. So let's just hear to how she was categorizing this story. So in this video, she's about to share her testimony. So before she shared her testimony, she had some few words to share with her audience. So let's examine the prophetess. Okay. Here we go. Tiffany Montgomery. If y'all don't start speaking up against these false prophets, and I know it's about a thousand videos out there saying I'm a false prophet. I'm not. But if y'all don't get on here and start speaking against these false prophets, they are going to become more powerful than you think in the church. And it will be almost impossible to get them out. It will be almost impossible to get them out. That lady that wore that napkin over her head that I warned y'all about, she is a soul hunter. She literally cast spells of death over people. And y'all just sit there and watch her like idiots. She is a soul hunter. She is a sorceress, a diviner. And because you're a generation who loves gossip, you sat here on YouTube or whatever platform and watched this lady cast spells of death upon people and you shared her videos. You have aided and abetted in the realm of the spirit a criminal offense against God. Okay, so <laughs> we are allowed to laugh, okay? So here, Tiffany, she's uh, referencing to uh, Celestial. Okay, she did not mention her name, but we know who she's talking about. Okay, there has been this battle that has been going on amongst these false prophetesses. From what I have seen, and to my knowledge, Celestia put out one video where she did call out uh, Tiffany Montgomery and pronouncing that, you know, her ministry, everything else is going to fall. You had other quote-unquote prophetesses who, has, who have also done the same. We have already done some of those videos already. So you guys, you can avail yourself to watch that. But notice to, uh, to her appeal over here, okay? She is saying that the church is silent. Well, YouTube is not the church, okay? This is a public square where we can come in and have the dialogues and interact and debate. This is not a church, so, uh, w what church is she referring to? Okay, because I, my church is not worried about Celestia, let alone about Tiffany. <laughs> okay, so there's no need for her to go that way, but she's going to go that way so that her people, right, they can go out there and defend her. Yes, they've been coming to defend her. They've shown up in my church as well. Not only that, uh, if you are a true prophetess, what do you care about a witch casting spells on you? Because that shouldn't face you in any way, shape or form. Because you are a true prophetess. But if you ask me, I think Tiffany is rattled by uh, Celestial. I think she's scared about Celestial. <laughs> so who knows? Who has the, the, the bigger... <laughs> <laughs> the bigger juju, wherever this thing is coming from, because all of them are false, uh, are false prophetesses, okay? So, 
To me, if you are a true prophetess of God, you wouldn't worry about anything else. Look at uh, Elijah, Mount Carmel. He wasn't tripping about these false prophets, right? He was out there. You guys bring out your, your gods. I'm going to show you mine. And we're going to see who is going to prevail. That should be a posture of anybody who professes to be a true prophetess. Like you're just going to mind your business and carry on to be doing what God has called you to be doing. If people are calling you that you are false, if people are pronouncing curses or whatever, that shouldn't faze you. So why is Tiffany so phased about these pronouncements that have come out from Celestial? And truth be told... She has also uh, passed judgment herself, okay? She has also pronounced curses on other people. So, like, okay, are your curses not strong enough as Celestial? What exactly is happening over here? So, you know, if we, you know, we stand on uh, the word of God, so we are not worried, okay? As long as whatever we are doing, we are saying, is in keeping with the scriptures according to the word of God, then there's nothing to worry. There's nothing to worry. Keep in mind that she is a prophetess. Is this... How a godly woman should be speaking. Let's find out. For sharing this sorceress's videos while she was casting death on people. And I just want you to take that depiction of what's happening in Colorado and in Venezuela right now. And I want you to understand that it will be like the body of Christ. You will never be able to say that you weren't warned. You will never be able to say, some people say, well, Tiffany, why are you just now talking about it? Because if she's been out here, baby, I didn't know who she was. She wasn't on my radar until she said my name. Isn't it just like God to want somebody to speak up against her? Not saying that others haven't, but somebody with my platform and influence to speak up against her. I am not like you. I don't watch everybody's videos. I have the gift of discerning of spirits. I can see who is who. I just keep scrolling up. I don't, can't listen to nothing that lady said. She looked weird to me. But she had to say my name. I need you to know that that was, if you read 1 Kings 22, you'll understand why, why God sent a lying spirit in her mouth for her to say my name. She had to say my name. It was the only way I was going to know she was on the earth. I, I, she was not even on my radar. Who is she? She had to say my name. If you don't know what's happening in Colorado and Venezuela, I want you to look it up. You can look it up on TikTok. They have most of the information. Um, but what's going on right now is incredible. And it is a very strong depiction of what is happening on, in the body of Christ if we do not stop it now. You can contend in intercession and in prayer to completely fight back against the works of darkness that are creeping into the church. These Hebrew Israelites are creeping into the church under the guise of prophets and apostles and pastors. And once they've amassed their following with their doctrine, um, they have now turned the truth of God into a lie and have made many err on the side of um, heresy. And God is very much against it. God is very much against it. There has been, there's some gangs that have taken over some things in Colorado. That's actually absolutely true. So my question is, what, what does that got to do with the church? Okay, what does that got to do with the church? Remember, the church, God has uh, designed three different spheres of government, right? You have the government, you, uh, the family is a government, the church is a government, right? And then we have this government, right? A, according to Romans 13. So the issues that are happening in Colorado, that is a jurisdiction of a government, okay? The states needs to take care of that particular businesses. The church is not going to go over there and to be chasing out these, uh, these gangs and criminals. That's not how things work. So, you know, the church, yes, we need to be praying for our, our leaders. We need to be praying for our nation. But also, this is also in Colorado, okay? You're not hearing about these gangs in Florida. You're not hearing about those gangs uh, in Texas or in Kentucky, right? So the policies, whatever people are voting for, these are the issues that you're going to, uh, these are the results of failed policies within these states, right? So whenever we sit back and allow ungodly leadership within these government spheres, these are the things that are going to happen in, within the nation. And let's not forget, God does judge the nation. So some of these evils that are happening, they're just not happening out of the vacuum. But we shouldn't just be blaming everything. Oh, the church this, the church that. Like, no, no, no. Okay? We need to take responsibility where we are supposed to be taking responsibility. So once again, she always just brings in whatever the church right to defend. I truly want to know, is she a member of any local church? A sound biblical church. 
I very much doubt. I don't know, but I would like to know if she is a good standing member of any church. So, uh, the, you know, this was her laying the groundwork to what she's about to say on her way to share her testimony. So, uh, warning, the things that she's about to say, they are not, not very appropriate. The stuff that she's about to say is not appropriate. So if you have kids listening in, I would say, you, do, you know, you don't want kids to listen from now onwards. Okay. Anyway, August 2015. This is my, this is the date that I got saved. August 2015, I gave my life to Christ. And before this month came to an end, um, I wanted to give God all the glory, honor, and the praise for saving my life from a death sentence. And I'm going to share why in a second. Now, um, I think that any of you that have young children, oh, let me say this. I love that somebody just said this. Let me say this. Somebody said, Tiffany, you shouldn't be cussing in the pulpit. And I remember when I first saw somebody say that, I was like, Lord, I know I, I am not a cussing woman because I left that at the cross. I do not cuss. I don't say none of the cuss words. And I was like, why do these people keep saying I'm cussing? And then I realized that people consider, when I say you pissed me off, they consider pissed off a cuss word. And then I realized um, people consider the word dick a curse word. And now let me say this, you might not like the words piss off or dick, right? You, you might not care for that word and you may feel like I could use a better word to give my examples. But the truth is men and women of God, those aren't bad words. It's just not a bad word. You might not like the word, but it's not a bad word. It's not a curse word. I would also say that in the context that I use the word dictum is because most of us, not all of us, some of y'all had good, good godly common sense, but not all of us. Some of us were dictum. That's why right now you're trying to get back five, 10, 15, and 20 years of your life because you were in a destiny destroying relationship because you were dictum. Now, could I use the word penis? Yes, but to be very honest with you, we weren't penis dumb. Penis means that you had good godly common sense. You had good godly character. You had good godly self-control. It means that you had a responsible man that loved you, cared for you, cherished you. He had the fear of the Lord. Penis means that you were married. You, He's not even gonna play you and have sex with you outside of marriage. Penis. Okay, guys. So this is a woman who calls herself a prophetess. And she's out here saying, people are calling me that I'm a false prophetess. I am not. According to herself, that she was anointed by God. You tell me who speaks like this. And she's not even tripping about it. And then she's giving you the, um, what these, these organs mean. Guys, wh where do you get that? And she's out there just throwing the D word as if it's nothing. And then she went on to the P word. And then she says like, oh, this is the P word means you, you had good godly sense. Where is she getting that from? Like, handle yourself accordingly like a woman. Let alone somebody who professes to be a prophetess for that matter. Okay. But this is, she just saying these things. And somebody had, you know, suggested to her like, you know, you use foul language and everything. Instead of her seeing it as a correction. No. She's just out here doubling down, guys. Even just the qualifications, right, of an elder, what are they checking? They are checking the character of the man in the home. They are checking how is he with his wife? How is he with his children? Because even the outsiders must think well of the person who aspires to be an elder. So which woman behaves like this? And not only that, and then they're going to call themselves a prophetess, and we're just going to excuse it like, oh, no, but she's a true prophet, but she's just an error. We, examples in the scripture, please. Examples in the scripture. We know we have Colossians 4 5. What is it telling us? Walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. This scripture is actually telling you walk in wisdom towards the outsiders. So the people who are you know, who don't know anything, who are not Christians, right? Should, is, is this okay? Can this be excused? How can this be excused? It cannot be. So this, uh, this young lady, mm -mm, we, we call it for what it is like, no. 
This is wrong. You, nobody can be penis dumb. You know what I mean? Like, nobody can, nobody's penis dumb. You can only be dick dumb. Dick dumb means you're stupid. You gave your body over to somebody you knew was cheating on you, knew didn't want you, um, knew was playing in your face. Dick dumb mean that you would fight everybody except for the man that's cheating on you. You know, dick, dick, you know what I'm talking about. So I, I get it, you guys. I understand. You do not like me using this word, but it's not going to stop me from using the word. So you should probably just move on. And most of the men that don't like me using the word um, are old, dumb, and full of cum. They are, they are taking the dick. And they're in your pulpits right now. They're preaching to you, and they're leaving off of the pulpit um, having sex with other men. And they are filled with the creamy substance, and now they want to come on live and talk about me. So I'll say it again. It's not a curse word. God has not convicted me about using the word. When he does, I will stop. But until then, I will continue to use the word in the context in which I use it in because there have been many people that have been delivered from being dictum because of this ministry. And I will continue to deliver the masses from dangerous dick. I'm just going to do it. So you'll just have to... Um, excuse me. And I just, uh, God is not mad at me about it. And um, as you continue to make your YouTubes about me and your TikToks about me, just make sure you include the men on the pulpits that are um, being rammed up the buttocks by dick. With that being said, I would like to tell all of you my salvation story and how I got saved. Guys, I don't know. And then... With everything that we just listened, now she's going to tell us that, oh, now with all that, I want to tell you my testimony, how I got saved. What, what purpose did that save? Because with everything that you just said over there, if there's me hearing you for the first time, I'm sorry, I'm not even interested to hear how you got saved. Because if you were saved, a saved woman who knows the word of God, who calls herself a prophetess, there is no way they can have this type of language, filthy, coming out of their mouth. And then to actually have the nerve, the audacity to say that God has not convicted her. So she's not going to stop. Well, God has already spoken through his word. God has already taught us that we need to let not, let, let not an awesome talk come out of your mouth. That, God has already said that. We are to walk in wisdom. God has already said that. We are to tame our tongue. God has already said that. So newsflash, remember, uh, God disciplines his children. So if you're just cruising in in life, busy sinning left and right, and there is no ounce of conviction within you, you need to truly, truly question, are you truly the child of God? Because God will bring discipline to his people. God will, will chastise his children. But if you're not feeling anything, if you're not convicted by anything, you need to question. Because the Holy Spirit lives in you. So you're just going to be out here doing this thing. So two things could be right. Either you're just living in sin, you're busy grieving the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit is not in you. You don't know the Lord. So it's just like, you know, you think you're saved and then you're not saved, right? You're just living your life like that. You know, before I was a Christian, I thought I was a Christian. I thought, like, you know, if you had asked me, I would have told you that, no, I'm a Christian. But I knew, like, okay, I need to get my affairs in order. I just didn't know. Okay? So there's people in that situation. And then there's people who know, who are actually deliberately living, uh, just sinning a lifestyle because sort of like it's not a big deal. They can just say whatever else they want to, uh, whatever comes out of their mouth. They are waiting for God to convict. Remember, God uses people. We are the hands and feet of God. So if people are telling you, like, you need to watch out your language, you should pay attention to it. You should pay attention to it. But she's so arrogant about it. And so whatever. I mean, like, who talks like this, guys? Ish. I'm very, it's very disturbing. Very disturbing, very disturbing. So there is no way you can tell me this woman has a husband at home who happens to be a Christian, married to this prophetess, and this is how she's 
behaving in these streets. Mm -mm. Hmm. No, 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 no. 